Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. There's a lot of people that I know that are thinking about buying a CNC machine, but they're really worried about if they have the ability to do it. And they're also worried that they're going to crash the machine when they run the parts. So what I thought I wanted to do was talk about what I do when I'm getting ready to run a part for the very first time. And most of the parts that I do run, I only run them once. I don't do a lot of production. So the first time I'm gonna run a part is the only time I'm gonna run a part for the most part. Uh, we're gonna kind of go through some of the steps that I take uh, to, to ensure that I'm not going to have any major crashes. I'll never say that I won't crash. I'm trying to prevent the catastrophic crashes. I don't want the spindle to crash into the vise or the tool to hit the vise jaws, things like that. So we're gonna take a look at some of the tools that I use on the sile with the Siemens control to do that. Uh, is my method 100% correct? I found this kind of funny this week. I received a sticker, thanks guy, that says that I'm a certified YouTube machinist. So uh, you should trust everything I say, and that's not really true. This is what works for me. This is how I like to do things. Other people like to run their programs in the air first. People like to try to uh, turn on single block mode. Uh, other people really rely on the distance to go of their control to make sure that they're in the ballpark. And I'm gonna show you the method that I use when I go to run a program for the first time. We're also going to see me use a new tool for the first time. I finally got a Heimer this week. This is going to save me so much time setting my work corner systems. So we're gonna see how this works. Unfortunately, I'm only gonna be able to use it in X and Y because I haven't calibrated it in Z yet, but that's probably something I'm going to do in a future video. So you can see how I calibrate this to the tool height probe, thanks to Peter Betts' video that I learned how to do that on. So let's go ahead and take a look at the part that I wanna use to go out to the machine and see how I do some checks to make sure that things are gonna run okay for me. So here's a part you may have seen me make in a previous video. I have more bottle opener stock, so I thought that this would be a good part to use as an example about how I went out there and decided that it was safe to run and I wasn't gonna have any major crashes with the vise. Again, there's no guaranteeing that I'm not gonna do something stupid like a large step over or something like that where I crash a tool and break it or wreck a piece of stock, but my goal is to not crash the tool into the vise or run through a vise jaw or hit the worst, like hit the spindle in the vise, something like that. So if I take a look at my top side setup, you can see how I have the work ordinance system set up. I have it in the top center of the part, and then we have the part sort of towards the bottom and a lot of the material, there's extra material all the way around the part. Uh, one of the first tool paths that comes in is an adaptive clearing that does the majority of the work and you can see it's cutting past the bottom of the part right here. Uh, 2D contour that happens. There's a trace that happens to clear up some material on the top, a spiral to clean up that other face, uh, a contour, another contour, you get the idea. There's a drill. Now this is one of those things I'm gonna have to pay attention to. Uh, I probably drilled this really deep and that's okay. I don't really want, you'll see what I mean in a second when we look at the code. I'm gonna look at how deep this drill goes, but I know that's in the center of the part and I'm okay with that. And some more contours, a chamfer, a trace, and then there's gonna be just some 3D tool pass and a mirror to do the other side. So that's the cam on this part. So we're gonna go out and set this part up in the machine and then I'm not actually gonna machine it. Before I hit go, I'm gonna show you how I do a quick check to make sure that I'm not gonna have any problems when I run this part. Let's head out to the machine and take a look at how I set things up. Hey everyone, uh, I'm inserting this into the video. I recorded this after everything else. And when I went back and edited the video, I realized we couldn't see the machine screen very well. So I'll work on that in the future, but I just wanted to come back and clarify some things here. So here's what the machine screen looks like. Now, one of the things I talked about was this TSM screen. And when I click on TSM, what it'll do is bring up some options like allow me to change the tools uh, speed. Or the other thing I did was activate a particular work offset. Um, if I wanted to change the tool, I would just put it, push in the number, and a couple times in the video I said to hit the cycle start, and that didn't get captured either. The cycle start button is right down here, the green button right there. So whenever I executed those commands and I said hit cycle start, I just moved my hand down to the green button and clicked on that. When I activated the work offset for GPT-4, I just moved my, I used these blue keys right there to move the cursor down to that spot. And then now when I'm on that field, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on it, 
and now it says 54, uh, 500 and then 54. So if I want to activate that, now I just come down and hit the cycle start button and then the, the G54 work coordinate system that is active on the screen. Um, also, the other, the other part that was difficult to see on the screen was when I loaded up a program. So I'm just gonna go over to the program manager and then now I wanna grab that program that I selected from the USB key. And if I look in the USB key, now you can see there's that Z height program. So again, I'm just using those blue arrow keys right there to arrow down to it. And then when I like it, I'm gonna click on the input button. And what I could see very clearly on the control that you couldn't see was this number right here, the negative 0.6675. So there's other tool heights that are on here like this negative 1.012, but that's the drill that's on the center of the part between the vice jaws that I don't care about. Um, so that's how I determined how low I needed to bring the tool down to make sure the tool wasn't going to collide with the vise that you're gonna see in the next clip coming up. The last thing that was maybe unclear to see was setting uh, the work offset, measuring the work. So I'm just gonna click on measure work. And I have some different options, a single surface, the center of a block or the center of a circle. And so I just chose the center of block option. The control tells me where I should move in, what direction from. And when, I, when I'm happy with that particular side, I say, say P1, repeat the process, say P2, say P3, say P4, and so on. So like if I hit say P1, now the graphic tells me to go to the other side of the part and do what I need to do. So it's pretty easy to follow along with. And when I'm done, I'm just gonna click on the set W's, uh, WO button. I kept saying W0 and I just did it right there too. Um, it's, not, it's work offset, not W0, but work offset is what that stands for. So I would hit set W0 and it would update that particular surface or that particular work offset based on the inputs that I put in there. So I hope that helps to clarify some things on this machine. Um, it really is nice and easy to use, and I don't want anybody to be intimidated and think that they don't have the capabilities to easily run a machine like the Sile X7. So I'm out in the garage now, and the first thing I have to do is I want to set my work coordinate system and find my X, Y, 0. So I've got the Heimer loaded in. You can see here the Heimer's in, and it's in tool number 12, so I told uh, I loaded up tool number 12 and put the Heimer in to the spindle. And now I'm ready to go ahead and find my XY center. So to do that, I'm gonna hop back over to the machine and I'm gonna say that I'd like to measure work. And since I put the work coordinate system in the top center, I'm gonna say I wanna use the four point method. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And then I'm just gonna come down here and instead of G500, I wanna set G54. So I'm gonna click that one time. And now the control is saying that it wants me to slide in from the side and set my first work coordinate system, my first P1, I should say. So I'm gonna grab my manual pulse generator, the MPG, and I've got this set to move at a thousandth of an inch. And what we're gonna do in the Heimer, you see that there's two needles here. There's a red needle and a black needle. We're gonna rotate around until the black needle's on zero and the red needle is on this other zero. And it also gives me an indication of how close I am to over traveling the Heimer and breaking the probe tip off. So I'm in my X axis of travel. I'm gonna to start to move over and what we'll see is the Heimer needle starts to move. So I'll just keep going around. So I need to go around one more time. And when I get close to it, I'm gonna to switch to the 10 thousandths of an inch and then I'll sneak up to the zero until I see that zero. And that's close enough for what I wanna do. And now I'm just gonna go over here and say I'd like to save P1. And now the display is telling me what I need to do next. So I'm gonna switch over to Z and I'm gonna move back to the thousandths of an inch increment. And I always like to go up first. And then once I know I'm safely up, now I can use my larger jog increment to get over to the other side. So I feel pretty good about that. I'm gonna come down in Z and when I think I'm far enough, now I'm gonna switch back to X, but I'm gonna put myself back to the thousandths of an inch mode and start to jog over until I make contact and I start to see the needles indicating. So I'm getting close to where I need to be. I'll switch to the 10 thousandths of an inch, move my zero up there close enough for what I wanna do. I'll come back over to the control and I'll say save P2. Now I need to come in from the front. So again, one more time, I'll switch to my Z increment and put it back to thousandths. 
and go straight up until I clear. Now I'll switch it to the X and go back to 100 thousandths. Use the jog handle to get me roughly back to the center. I'm gonna come this way in Y until I know I'm clear. And then I'm gonna come down in Z until I'm clear. Switch back to Y and go to the thousandths of an inch. And now I can just start to jog back until I make contact with the Heimer. And I'm just kind of visually watching and looking at the needle so you can see now I'm making my contacts. We're gonna go around one more time. I'll switch to my 10 thousandths of an inch and then bring it up to the zero. So I like that. So I'll say save P3 over on the machine. I'm gonna to switch to my Z increment, uh, Z axis, switch back to the thousandths. I'm gonna go straight up until I know I'm clear. I'm gonna to switch to the Y and 100 thousandths of an inch or 10 thousandths of an inch, I guess is what we're moving. I'm gonna come back. Now that I know I'm clear, I'm gonna come down, put it back in Y and a thousandths of an inch and I'll just come forward again until I make contact. So I can see my needles moving now. So I'll just keep going around until my needle gets close to zero. And then I'll switch it to the 10 thousandths of an inch, bring it up. And when I feel good about where that needle's at, I'm gonna come over here and say, save P4. So I got my four pre, uh, sets. I wanna make sure that I have G54 verified. And now I'm gonna say set W0. And now I've saved that work ordinance system. So I'm gonna hit the machine button to take me back. Uh, and I'm gonna go back a couple times just to get to the main screen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna jog back up. So I'm gonna go back to my Z axis and put my thousandths of an inch. Now what I wanna do is I wanna use this TSM screen. So I'm gonna click on TSM and I'm gonna scroll down until I find, I wanna activate my work ordinance system. So I'm gonna say, I wanna activate G54. So I'll say cycle start because of that. Now I just set G54. I can go back and I can say, I wanna see the actual value of the work. So this coordinate system that we see here now is the X, Y, zero of the machine. Remember, we haven't set Z yet. So I'm just gonna put this in Y and move that till it says zero or roughly zero. So there's close enough to zero. And then I'm gonna come with X and I'm gonna set that till that's zero. So there's two ten thousandths of an inch. Now, all I wanna do is visually check. I'll bring this down a little bit on the machine over here. So all I wanna do is visually check and say, does that look like that Heimer is in the center of my part visually? Is it perfect? No, I can't tell thousands of an inch or anything like that. But what I can tell is I'm not shifted way off to one side or the other. So that tells me that I've gotten my X and Y work coordinates set properly. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch out the Heimer and put in another tool. So I'll be back when I have that all set up. Okay, so I took the Heimer out and now I'm ready to load up the tool that I'm going to use to do the deepest cut, which is tool number two, the three inch end mill. So on the machine, I'm back in TSM and under the tool change, I'm gonna type in tool number two, which is my tool number, and then hit cycle start. And it's gonna think that it's gonna put tool number 12 back, even though I've already taken that out of the machine. I don't want the Heimer in the tool changer. And now it's gonna load up tool number two. And with my manual pulse generator again, I'm just gonna bring the tool down, tell it somewhere close. So just kind of getting it close in there. And now that I'm close, I'm gonna kind of switch to the thousandths of an inch. And then I'm gonna use a trick that I'm, uh, I'm super excited to get the Heimer for because now what I do is I just lower this tool down and I just move, I just move the piece of paper around until it catches. So I'm just moving it down a thousandths of an inch and there I can start to feel some friction. Maybe one more. So I probably should take into account the thickness of the paper, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to call that good for right here. So now I'm going to come back over and say that I'd like to measure work. This time I want to do a single surface and that surface is going to be Z, but I still want it to be for G54. So now I'll say I want to set my work offset. So let's go ahead and, and set that. And now that's my Z0 is the end of that tool on the top of the part. I can go back and I'm just gonna raise the, the cutter back up now. And then I'm gonna jog over, go to a little faster speed here. I'm gonna jog off to the side a little bit and I can get rid of this piece of paper now. Now what I wanna do is over on the machine is I wanna pull up the program manager 
and I want to go to the USB and I want to pull up the program that I made called Z height and on the Z height I'm going to say input and the, the key thing I'm going to look for here is tool number two tells me it's going to a negative 0.6675 so that's the deepest that tool is going to go there are other tools that are going to go fairly deep um, like this drill is going to go negative one but I don't care about that because it's a drill and I expect it to go really deep through the part and it's in the center of the vise so that's going to be okay I'm expecting that so everything else on here looks like it looks like that 0.6675 is my deepest tool which is my three ace now I'm going to say uh, I'll just go back to the machine screen so negative 0.6675 so now that I'm off to the side I'm going to go back to my TSM just to, I do this just to make sure that I'm on the right work offset and cycle start and then I'll go back and now I want to see my actual value of work so I'm going to switch over to Z and kind of I'm kind of looking at the machine and I'm kind of looking at the controller until I see minus 0.6675 So there's six six. I'll switch it up a little bit and pull it back. Six six seven. If I really wanted to get technical about it, I can move it to the ten thousand seven inch. So if I move over on the machine again, now what I can do is I'll come back a little bit in Y first. We'll we'll switch to a little faster increment. And really, what I'm trying to do is stay above my vice jaw. So now if I slide over. What I would see based on this is I'm going to hit the vice jaw. So let me go ahead and grab the camera and take a closer look at this. So we're going to come down and I'll get right down in there. And what you should see is that that tool is going to run into the vice jaw. So I need to figure out how to move my part around in the stock um, or whatever it might be. So what I, what I would do now is go back in to Fusion and edit my my program and then I'd come out and I'd repeat this whole process over again I don't have to repeat the setting the X Y and Z I've already got that set but I would do this check to make sure that I'm not going too deep and once I make that check and I know everything's okay I have a hundred percent confidence to run this program knowing that I'm not going to crash anything into my vice because I did this check and I checked my tool at its deepest point so I hope that gives you a little insight on how to set up the machine and do some checking to be confident that your program is going to run just fine and you're not going to have any catastrophic crashes. So as always, thanks for watching and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below.